This motivates us to step out of our comfort zone and face challenges and uncomfortable situations with courage, perseverance, and yes, even joy. We need to feel like we belong. And we need to feel like we have a purpose in life. We need to feel needed. Today's Gospel reading offers us both. We first learn about the importance of fish, and then we learn the importance of sheep. Some New Testament experts often point out that one way we can tell that the resurrection stories are true is that they don't always show the disciples in the best light. If the, the disciples of Jesus had made up the story, they would surely have given themselves a more faithful response to the news that Jesus had written from the dead. Their own part of the story would have been more heroic and flattering. Instead, we read about the disbelief, their failure to accept the women's eyewitnesses account as anything more than an idle tale. And here, we see them spending an entire night fishing for what? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And some of these were fishermen but by trade. This is how they had made their living before following Jesus. Surely, they knew what they were doing. But after a long night of casting their nets, they came up empty. And now it was morning. The sun wasn't up quite yet, but in the early light of dawn, they could see a fire on the shore. And though they had caught nothing, someone on the shore must have, as they could tell someone was cooking fish under the rocks. They weren't far from shore, and they could hear someone call to them. Children, you have no fish. No, they answer. And Jesus says, cast your nets to the right side of the boat. And suddenly their net is full, 153 varieties of fish. This story is reminiscent of the beginning of Jesus' ministry, when he climbs into Peter's boat to put some space between himself and the crowd. Put it out into deep water and let down your nets, Jesus tells him. Okay, if you say so, says Peter, but we've been fishing all night and have caught nothing. When the nets come back up, they are full. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fisher of men. But this time, this post-resurrection fishing trip, John tells us that disciples whom Jesus loved is the first one to recognize that it is Jesus on the shore and says to Peter, it is the Lord. Peter quickly gets dressed and jumps into and swims to the rocks. The others bring in the boat full of fish. And Jesus asks, bring some of the fish you have caught. Peter gets back in the water and hauls in the catch. They sit down for breakfast of grilled fish and broken bread. This is, is as close as Jesus gets to describing the Lord's Supper. But instead of the last meal before crucifixion, crucifixion Jesus now offers a post-resurrection breakfast. Jesus didn't need their fish, for he was already cooking some while they were out fishing and their nets were still empty. But when they follow his command, he invites them to add their fish to the food he has already prepared. Jesus uses our God-given talents and adds them to the work that he is already doing in our lives. He invites us to share in a feast that he has prepared using whatever gifts we may bring. When the fishermen came up empty using their own methods, Jesus gives them a simple command, change the way you are doing things, and suddenly they are blessed with abundance. Books have been written about the significance of the 153 fish in the disciples' net. One interpretation is that this number comes from the fourth century theologian Jerome who wrote that there were 153 species of fish known in the first century Galilee, symbolizing the extent which fishing would go to the whole world. Maybe Jerome was right, and maybe not. One thing is for sure, is the net that was empty, despite the fishermen trying their best. But when they followed Jesus' command to do things differently, the net is so full, and yet it didn't break. The disciples' capacity to catch fish grew with their obedience. Perhaps we can learn something from them. 
For after breakfast, Jesus and Peter go for a walk down the beach. They have a short but repetitive conversation. Three times, Jesus asks, Simon, do you love me? And three times, Peter answers, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Each time, Jesus responds with a command to care for his sheep. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep, and feed my sheep, Jesus says. It is easy to see the connection between Peter's earlier three denials and these three assurances of loyalty and devotion. It is also easy to see why Peter is hurt when Jesus asks him a third time, Do you love me? You know everything, Lord. You know that I love you, Peter insists. It's not easy to see the way Jesus draws Peter into a new relationship through a short conversation. Keep in mind that when Peter was in the high priest's courtyard, he didn't deny the divinity of Jesus or Jesus' claim to be the Messiah. What Peter denied was his own relationship to Jesus. When he was asked twice, are you not one of his disciples? And Peter says, I am not. And then when he is asked a third time, he denies even knowing Jesus. Now as they walk together beside the lake, Jesus not only restores that relationship, but creates a new one. By the third time he questions, Simon, son of John, he is asking for more than general compassion or affection. Jesus asks, do you love me like a brother? You claim me as your friend, but can I claim you as my friend? Peter's distress is almost as important as his words. You know everything, Lord. You know that I love you. You know all my failings and my weaknesses, and you learn to know my sin. If you still want me as your friend, I will be your friend as well. Feed my sheep, Jesus tells him. Up to this point, Jesus has portrayed himself as the good shepherd. Now he entrusts the care of his flock to Peter. It isn't that sheep have replaced fish in importance, but shepherding has been added to fishing. Jesus ends the conversation the same way he began his relationship with Simon and the other fishermen back at the start of his ministry. Follow me, he says. Follow me, Jesus calls to us now. Follow me, whether we are fishing or herding sheep. Follow me, when he calls us to change the way we've always done things so that he can bless us with abundance. Follow me as he prepares a feast for us that combines what he provides with what we offer of ourselves. Follow me into such a close friendship, such a deep love, that all can be forgiven and all can be made whole. When Jesus calls, will you follow? Amen. There's a church in dear old Greenfield that's known throughout the land for its lovely lighted window with its inspiration grand. 
Many an evening as I passed it, tired from duties of the day, I have felt inspired, uplifted, as I've homeward gone my way. This window shows our Savior with his sheep, carefree and calm, as they know they're safe from harm. In his arms a lamb is carried. We are the sheep and he's our shepherd. As we feed in pastures green, knowing if we only trust him, we may safely on him lean. Jesus tells us in his Bible that he loves us every one, even sparrow, sheep, and mankind, all that grows beneath the sun. Grant that as we view this window, we may strive to better grow and live up to nobler natures as we pass it to and fro. Bless this church and all who enter. May its influence expand. Bless the pastor and his family. May we form a mighty band that will spread the gospel's story, further God's work here on earth, for without his Holy Spirit, there is nothing that has worth. Thank you.